Hi, welcome to another video. Um, this time we're going to be going over some advanced command line for the Linux operating system. So this is important stuff to know when you are kind of on the system, running around, uh, making changes and such. So the first thing we're going to learn about is symbolic links. Now symbolic links are essentially kind of like shortcuts. So if you're used to Windows, you could used to be able to make a shortcut on a desktop that might reference a file somewhere else and everything like that. So you can kind of think of symbolic links as the same. Um, what we're going to do here is I'm logged on to a server and I'm going to go to the Etsy Nginx folder. So Nginx is a kind of a web server that's really fast to use, um, kind of more modern than Apache. And what they have here is they have a couple different folders. So they have a sites available and a sites enabled folder. I'm going to go into the sites available folder and look at the files in there. And so I see a couple of config files. Uh, they've got read and write permissions uh, for root and dev. Um, and these files essentially set up different websites that we have on, on this server. Um, so just typical files tells you how big they are and such. But let's go up a folder and go back to the sites enabled folder um, and view the files in there. So they look a little bit different. They kind of show a file name, creativehomes.app, and it has this arrow, and then it references an actual file that is um, kind of back uh, up a folder in the, and then in the sites available, and it's basically the Parades of Home map um, that we have here. Notice that the, the starting character, instead of it being a D or a dash, it actually has an L, which means that it's a symbolic link. And you can also see that the file size is quite a bit smaller than what it was um, prior on, on here. Um, so symbolic links are, are really, I'm guessing, it might just be a number of characters in there uh, related to that. This has more characters, therefore it's 45 and, and all that kind of stuff. So, um, so what this does is it allows us to kind of have all of our different sites in one folder, like the sites available, and then you can turn sites on and off really quick by just adding a symbolic link in there and then restarting the Nginx process. Um, so let's go ahead and play with this a little bit and let's see how we can create a symbolic link. I'm going to go up to the sites available folder and let's just pretend I'm going to make a new site and the easiest way usually to make a new site is to copy a configuration. So I'm going to copy red sky tech and I'm just going to call it whizbang.com um, dot conf, um, copy it over there, and uh, so it's complaining I don't have the right permissions because this folder is owned by root uh, right here, and you can see that uh, root can write to this folder, but not even the group of root or other users can write to this. So I'm going to have to run this command as sudo, and we're going to get to sudo here in just a little bit, which means uh, super user do so run this command as a super user. Um, only certain people that are in the sudo users list can actually do that, but again, we'll get to that. So I have that file there. So I got whizbang.com, and then if I go back to the sites enable folder, I can do a symbolic link. And this time, again, I'm gonna have to do it as sudo. And then you do ln for link, and then dash n for symbolic link. So a symbolic link is really just a shortcut going to it. There's a way to do a link that's a hard link without the dash s, which really kind of treats the files one as the same as far as the operating system is concerned. So if you really delete one, you might delete the other one and such. Um, and uh, symbolic links are usually the way that you want to go. So you'll do the symbolic link, and then you'll give it a name So um, for your link, so like whizbang.com. Um, and then you give it the path to that file you're symbolically linking. So sites available, and again you can hit tab, and it kind of autocompletes. Double tab shows it, and whizbang.com. Um, oh, I might have actually switched this around. It might be the file name that you're the real file name, and then what you want to call it. So whizbang.com.com. There we go. So that is the right way. Do an LL. And you can see whizbang.com um, com goes there, and that's it. So, um, and now if I uh, cat that file, as we learned in our previous video, 
it'll actually show the original file, not necessarily anything else. So it actually follows that link when you cat there. Um, however, if you just delete this, it won't delete the original file. Um, it'll just delete the symbolic link, which is good for us. Um, and then if I go back up to the sites available, um, we can see the whiz bang is still there that, that we had prior. So I'm just going to, for cleanliness, just delete this um, there. And we're going to move on to a different uh, operation that you'll commonly do, um, which is the pipe operator. So the pipe operator is the kind of the backslash um, shift command. So it looks like that. That's the pipe operator. And you'll typically do this to pass the output of one program to another program. So um, like I could do cat and I can look at these files like the open app and if I hit enter it just it spits it all out to my screen you have to kind of scroll up and this one isn't actually that long. Um, let's look at one that might be a little bit longer. Let's look at this red sky one and so as you can see you gotta scroll up and go through it and all that fun stuff. Um, Let's say I wanted to take the output of CAD in that file and, and put it into a program called less. So you do CAT, the file name, take the output of that, pipe it into this program called less. Um, and now less allows you to kind of scan up and down it real quick. Um, you can search through it. Uh, you can do uh, the forward slash character, um, uh, which allows you to kind of search and you can type SL and it jumps to that and you get N for next all these different things uh, Q to quit um, that's that uh, more is similar you could pipe it into another program called more which is um, just it doesn't allow you to search but you can just kind of hit enter and it goes one step at a time so you're kind of slowly going through your, your code right there again Q to exit that so Again, the pipe operator is good for passing from one program to another. But now let's say I wanted to um, take the output of that command and pipe it essentially into a file. Well, you don't typically use the pipe operator. In fact, I don't think you can. You use the redirect operator, which is the um, kind of greater than symbol that you have there. So um, I could take something like a program like Echo, which is like hello world and I can hit enter and it just prints it out to my screen right there hello world but if I wanted to um, I'm just gonna go up to a folder that I can write to so uh, again up arrow up arrow echo there and if I redirect this into like test.txt hit enter it doesn't print out hello world but if we look in this folder there is now a test.txt right there 12 bytes big and if I cat that file I can see it as hello world so redirect operator is for the output of one program into a file or stream whereas the pipe operator is for one program to another program or one utility to another utility um, two programs like I was mentioning that you can use to quickly look at files is less and you can kind of say less and you can give it a file name you want it to bring up um, and you can view it this way in case you have the page up or page down and uh, more is another one um, uh, looks like more just prints it out to the screen um, but let's say you had a really long file and you just wanted to look at just maybe the beginning of it or the end of it or such and that such a thing and, and typically like this would be in like your var log files um, if we look in here um, we can look at maybe our firewall rules um, or maybe our HA proxy uh, logs. Let's see here if there's anything really long. Okay, authentication. So we can kind of look at people trying to log into the server. Um, we can look at this auth log. If I cat it, it'll just probably uh, pseudo cat it. Um, it'll just stream and stream and stream and you have to wait until it gets to the end. You can see we're up to the, the 12th and all that kind of stuff. But let's say I just wanted to look at maybe the last, you know, few lines of it. Well, then you can run instead of um, uh, instead of cat, you could run tail, which looks at the tail end of the file, um, and you can hit tail and and hit enter, and there you go. We're looking at just kind of the very end of this file, 
Um, let's say you wanted to look at more lines than that, and so tail has a dash n where you could specify like a hundred lines in there. So you hit enter. There we go. We're looking at just a hundred lines of that and such. Um, another cool thing you can do with tail, and this only really works with tail, is say you just wanted to kind of start watching the end of that file and print out to the screen if anything ever changes. So if we do a tail dash f, which means follow, it spits it out, but you can see I don't have my terminal um, that I can type on because it is waiting for more um, logs to be entered onto this auth.log. So um, you can control C to kill that and get out of there and uh, be done with it. Let's say you wanted to look at only the start of the file, like the first 50 lines of the file. Well, instead of tail, you can actually say head. So head dash n 50 lines and there we go we got our 50 lines and it stopped right there so tail and head are very kind of common tools that you'll use on the command line to look at files especially large files um, and then the last thing I wanted to talk about was that sudo so um, uh, again I am logged in as the dev user so dev um, and the dev user has access only to dev files um, or anybody that's in the group that he's in. So if you type groups, um, you can see that my user is part of the dev group or the sudo group, meaning the super user do group. Um, and that allows you to be able to control and, and uh, configure uh, stuff. But let's say you created a new user with like maybe the add user command, um, which you would add user and you would um, you have to put in somebody's name like Josh and what groups they want to be in and all that kind of stuff but let's say um, you add that user and you want him to become part of this uh, sudoers list they call it sudoers um, and you can edit the sudoers with a command called vi sudo um, which I'll probably have to run as root um, and this allows me to kind of come down and kind of configure settings for the sudo you users. So those who are in the sudo group have access to all of the files to execute. And then you could add in this no password command here, which won't prompt me for a password when I do the sudo command. So that's kind of nice um, to not have to type in that password every time, especially on our servers where we... Um, use public private keys to authenticate and the dev user typically doesn't have well it has a very complex password that you aren't you don't know um, so the again the VI sudo allows you to kind of adjust some of these properties of those groups but really it's just the dev user being part of the um, the sudo group that allows him permission to uh, run sudo commands um, last thing you can do with sudo, uh, it's a very simple way, but you can actually become root as your dev user. So let's just say you get tired of doing sudo ls or sudo cat or um, off, you know, and you just get kind of tired of, of typing sudo in front of everything. Um, one simple way is actually to become root, and you can do that without having to type in this password by doing sudo su, which uh, changes you to root and it actually kind of logs you in as another session um, and then you can go around you can just cat files that um, that you know only you can cat and stuff uh, to exit this root user and go back to the dev you just type exit and you are back on the dev so um, overall these are some of the more advanced commands we'll create more videos that have even more stuff um, next big set of videos we'll do is on kind of terminal editors to be able to edit some of these files um, and uh, being able to change them in a command line since we don't have really a, a user interface with menus and buttons and all that kind of stuff. Uh, knowing how to edit files will be important to do too. So, all right. Thank you.